I won't deny it. I'm a straight rider. You don't wanna fuck with me. Got the My Indian friends get fucked up, hang out with me, do all kind of wild shit. And all of a sudden I see him in one of them cousins wearing, I don't even recognize that <laughs> Because he's standing in line for his culture. And so I'm just simply saying, black people, pride is more than February. Mm. Saying I like being black. Pride is an actionable thing that I must and will do. If I believe in myself and believe in this shit I'm saying, at some point I have to make a conscious decision to show it. To show it. To show it. To show it. To show this is the story of the ancient gods. The gods of our fathers before colonization. In this episode, we explore the ancient belief system and how it was used to govern society. Ancient Africans believed and understood the importance of separating the man from the animal nature that we're all born with. This is what the ancient Egyptians did. They used these, these animals, whether it be the head or the body, to symbolize the division between uh, the, the, the man or woman and the animal nature. Foreign concept. The Unapologetically Black Podcast. 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 Many moons before the likes of Charles Darwin were born, Native Africans understood the theory of evolution and adaptation. They figured out that there was still a part of our brain that rationally reacted based on animal instinct. This part of the brain is called the reptilian brain or primal brain. It is the part of your brain that is responsible for your instinctive actions when involved in a fight or flight incident. Think about it this way. If you've ever been chased by a dog, played knocked or run, or was about to get slapped by your mom, your animal instinct kicks in. It guides you on what best action to take. Fear is so important for our survival, we do something absolutely remarkable. Our bodies begin to react to a threat before we're even consciously aware of what the threat might be. Ancient Africans understood that man had a choice to make in terms of who he is within. They came to this conclusion by studying the brain. Within their studies, they found three parts of the brain which they refer to as the Holy Trinity. Each part had a purpose and a reason for being there. The first, I have already mentioned, the reptilian brain, located in the brainstem. It is happiest when safe from danger. It is essentially the selfish part of our brain that only thinks about survival. The second part of the Holy Trinity is the mammalian brain, which is located in the limbic system. It is the part of the brain that helps a community survive. It is happiest when you feel a sense of trust or when you're creating social bonds. The last part of the Holy Trinity is the primate brain. This is located in the neocortex region of the brain. It is responsible for your conscious thoughts, reasoning, and intellectual thoughts. It is essentially the thinking part of your brain. Ancient Africans were masterminds of puns, metaphors and analogy. Many of their stories were stories within stories. The reason for this is likely down to the environment. Different parts of the brain works better in certain environments than others. The African brain. African being a general term I'm using to describe black people from all over the world. Developed a cosmological approach in terms of thinking, meaning it relied on intuition when making crucial decisions. Now, cosmological thinking, which is right brain cultures, cultures of Melanin Hugh, um, learned, or I should say, uh, looked at the world in terms of abstractions, all right? So, and they categorize things according to these abstractions. 
In contrast, the European brain developed as a logistic approach, which is essentially a rational thinker. While syllogistic thinking, the left brain, um, which is where we're at now with, left, with our Western culture, basically um, was about um, deductive reasoning. The reasons behind this is not due to evolution, but an adaptation of environment. Natural disasters, such as the Ice Age, resulted in a blockage, which meant that food was scarce. Scientists have told us we've gone through an ice age and there's, you know, man, woman developing in this climate would have uh, a lack of sunlight. So they would lose pigmentation in their skin, turning it white. And, um, you know, things would also change like the hair texture, on the nose, the, the shape of the skull, things that, that nature to adapt to the environment. And it's not evolution. Whereas in a warmer climate, there was no need for an adaptation in terms of learning to survive in freezing conditions. We were still blessed with our natural resources, which meant we didn't have to work as hard to survive, resulting in us becoming more laid back. That's why you hear things such as black man timing, because we were designed to be more nonchalant. As the ancient Africans had discovered how the brain worked, and as a result, each part of the Holy Trinity was given its own story and a purpose. From the Holy Trinity came the story of Hiru, the metaphor in which ancient Egyptians used to explain the concept of God. Hiru was an Egyptian god whose story was created to enable man and woman to understand how a different hemisphere of the brain and universe worked. His story was a grand metaphor used to understand what the goal of life was by helping man connect to a higher purpose, thus becoming a god-man or a god-woman. It is said the analogy used within the story of Hiru shows how advanced ancient Africans were in terms of their morals and how they governed their society. Hiru was born from an immaculate conception for his father, Osa, and his mother, Oset. Hiru's father, Osa, was the king of kings. He was known as the uniter, a man beyond the influence of emotions. He was the metaphor ancient Africans used to describe cosmological and syllogistic thinking. To simplify that, he had mastered the usage of the left and right side of his brain, which enabled him to become a great judge, a high being, a god. Osa was dethroned by his evil brother, Set. Set was a jealous, angry man who envied his brother. He was the metaphor used to describe the reptilian brain, the animal nature within us. He killed Osa and cut him into 14 pieces, which he spread throughout the planet and became king. Long live the king. Osa's wife, Oset, devastated as he would be, went on a journey to collect all 14 parts of his body that was cut up to reassemble them in order to bring him back to life and back to the throne. Oset represented the mammalian brain, which is responsible for helping a community survive by creating social bonds. After finding 13 out of the 14 parts, there was still one piece missing. Where's my willy? Girl, I can't find my willy! Oset had an immaculate conception which resulted in her son being born. The son, Hiru, was a metaphor for primate thinking, the part of your brain that is happiest when learning. When Hiru came of age, he started to engage in battle with his uncle. Numerous battles were fought and they all ended in stalemate, meaning a draw. 
Hiru decided to seek knowledge and wisdom from the Tahutis who were spiritual and intellectual masters. The Tahuti represented the pineal gland of the brain, the part of the brain people try to activate when meditating in order to awaken their subconsciousness. It is often referred to as the third eye. What I'm talking about might save your life someday, okay? Okay, Mr. Mackey, okay? Okay. From the knowledge gained from the third eye, Hiru was able to defeat his uncle, bring his father back to life, and reclaim what was rightfully theirs. The story of Hiru, or Horus, as the Greeks refer to him, has been plagiarized or copied by many modern day religions. The most known is the story of Jesus Christ. The similarities, which I did not mention at the start, are astonishing. They claim there are several parallels which prove this, such as Horus was born of a virgin Isis on December 25th in a cave. A star in the east announced his birth and he was visited by three wise men. He was baptized by Anup the baptizer. He had 12 disciples, he performed miracles like walking on water and raised El Osiris from the dead. He gave a sermon on the mount, was crucified between two thieves, buried for three days and was resurrected. He was called Christ, anointed one, the way, the truth and the light, Messiah, son of man and many other titles that are applied to Jesus. Both stories also focus on coming back from the dead. But anyways, I don't want to focus too much on the similarities. I'd rather you did your own research and come to your own conclusion about the topic. Ancient Africans understood that the story of Hiru was a metaphor as it enabled them to integrate science and the concept of God into one. That way, by understanding one, you automatically understood the other. Betty, you smart. You very smart. Additionally, the story of Hiru held significant importance in Egyptian society as it was the model used to govern society. The people of Africa understood that leaders of empires had to rule through the use of integrated thinking as well as rational thinking. They decided that all their leaders had to be like Osa, a leader not influenced by emotions. They understood that men like Set ruled by just simply using syllogistic thinking and were too emotional and unstable, which wasn't the quality they were looking for in a man, yet alone a leader. The story of Hebrew was also a metaphor designed to better the ordinary person. They believed that God was in everything on earth, from the trees, to the waters, to the plants. Basically, in their eyes, every creation was a part of God. These metaphors were created to make you think about the divine God within yourself. Like I said before, their stories were stories within stories. Foreign Concept, the unapologetically black podcast. 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 Um, the story of Hiru is fascinating as there's about three to four different versions of it, but they all have the same core, which consists of the battle between Osa, Oset, Hiru and Set. You should definitely look it up as it's really interesting. Oh yeah, I also found out that the term hero, as in superhero, is said to have originated from Hiru. He is said to have been the very first superhero ever made. What I'm talking about might save your life someday, okay? Okay, Mr. Mackey, okay? Okay. This is again a result of the cos... As a result of the cosmology... Cosmology... Reptilian... Reptilian... Reptilian brain... Reptilian played knocked or run or was about to get slapped by your mum, it guides you, you're, uh, fuck off. The analogy used 
within the story of Hiru. Remember his name as well. I've already said that bit. Fuck. Where uh, Hiru was born from, like, you know, like Im Immaculate Conception, where they don't have to beat and the kid, she's just pregnant. Immaculate Conception, nigga, please. Yeah. Like, that shit don't happen. Man.